Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. As always, I hope you're all doing very, very well. And today I want to talk about something called Fluent APIs and Painting Objects. Um, the person who gave me the idea for this lesson was Samuel Stenso. I'm not sure if this is how it's pronounced. But um, yeah, thanks Samuel. He was sharing some ideas on Twitter and uh, he has a really good thread of kind of Laravel hidden gems or little tricks to help your code, I'm going to leave the link on the description. Thanks so much. So today, let's start with Fluent APIs. So I'm not going to show you guys the rest of the code. You've probably used it at some point in your life, even if you don't know what it is. But take a look at this. You see how instead of instantiating new objects or creating several variables, you just have a Fluent method call, um, a series of method calls so a Flint API is pretty much that, an API that relies a lot on method chaining. This is method chaining. You have your first method, you have your second method, you have your third method, and you have your fourth method. And the way it works is each one of those methods is manipulating something, but in the end they always return the instance itself. So you're still working with the same instance or another instance but of the same class. Let's take a look at this one. Eliminate stringable. So actually let's go to str and you can see that when you call the of method, when you start the method chaining, you are calling, you are actually getting an instance of stringable. And if we go to stringable, you can see that it accepts a value and all of the methods returns an instance of itself. So when you call after, it calls after and then it gives you an instance of stringable. When you call after last, it executes the method, puts the result in the constructor and gets you an instance of stringable as well. And this is how the methods are chained. And in this case, we don't have it, but usually you usually have a final method, a method that does something. Uh, to give you guys another example, for those of you who have tested a little bit with Laravel, you know that we have a very powerful test suite and that we can make a TTP request to a route. So it usually looks something like this. This, root, and then you get a response. This is another object. So what you get here is another object. But you probably also know that you can do lots of stuff here. You can go and say this, acting as user, you can pass headers and all of that. This is fluent as well. And when you get the response, let me show you, you guys. Uh, test response, this is it. You can make several assertions and you can see that it always returns the object itself. That means that you can make these assertions in succession. You can go and say, sorry, response, assert something, then assert something else, do something, and it goes on and on. So you can see that pretty much every method returns uh, an instance of the object, returns the object itself, it does something and then returns the object. And this is a Fluent API. This is not limited to PHP or Laravel, this is common in all languages. Uh, when you are working on JavaScript and you do, you know, let's say an array and then you do map, then you do reduce, I'm sorry, <laughs> then you do reduce, stuff like that, you are also working with a Fluent API. So imagine this without the Fluent API, the mess it would be, you would probably first have to do the append, then do the replace, then do the lower, or you would just go into, you know, that little how that we have, which is lower, then replace last, then append. So a Fluent API gives you uh, a much more readable code. And now that we know this, let me get rid of this. Let's talk about painting objects. If I'm not mistaken, Freak from Spotty, I don't know if this is how it's pronounced. I think it's Spotty. I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to ask him. Uh, has done a video on this, but I think it's for a paid series about building MailCoach, one of their apps. But if it isn't, uh, you guys can leave it in the description. I think they probably do a better job than I do on explaining things. So let's use this example of code. Let's say you want to send an SMS message, a text message. So we have a from number, we have a to number, 
and we have a message and we have this job which sends a message and if we look we have the from to content is scheduled to and this is supposed to be carbon instance so when the message should be sent and if it should be retried if it happens to fail so when we look at this at the parameters uh, it's not really I mean if you know the order of the parameters it's clear but uh, we have a no here we have a false what does it mean and sure we could start those in variables to make a little bit easier to read but we still have too many arguments and this is not an extreme case I've seen way worse than this and using the fending object really 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 helps so instead of doing this what we can do is write something much more readable something like a pending message make to start it from the from number to the to number with the message and then we can say scheduled to let's say now or we can pass don't schedule and we can say don't retry or retry something like that and then we can just say send and in this case send is the final method so here we return an instance of the class of the object this is a static method from here to here we don't do we always return the object itself we can manipulate the object but we always return it that's how we achieve method chaining and then we send it so it's possible to also have method chaining between objects if let's say that send returns an object you can also work with it so let's say you get an object that has the assert successful method you could call it but in this particular case from here to here we are just manipulating the pending message object and if we take a look at it we have the parameters and take a look at the method so they pretty much just set um, values to the parameters so we have the from method the to method the content method the schedule method which should actually so let's change it here it's actually it's, oh no we are using done schedule so we don't have done schedule but we can just say to no and return the object we have the retry and we have the send and here's where the magic happens when you call send and it is the final method it actually dispatches the job so that mass we had earlier it's actually hidden here and as we have the parameters on the on the object itself um, we don't have to deal with the mass on our um, I wouldn't say public API but uh, that's not what I'm what I'm thinking I don't know the word for it in English but um, I mean in the final layer of your code you can instead have this really beautiful thing uh, this is much more coherent you know um, it makes much more sense than a bunch of parameters in the constructor so you can you can if you go top down you can see what's happening you're setting the from number you're setting the to number of the message you're saying that you do not want it to be scheduled and then you are saying saying that you want it to be retriable I would actually change this now to retriable and then you are sending the message and it all gets encapsulated here Laravel does this in many many places you probably use it without even knowing um, for instance when you have a model and you do model fill save you are working with a Fluent API take a look at this it returns an instance of the object itself so uh, that's it guys I think we're done here but that's pretty much it um, I think now I should probably have used some more interesting examples but I think this gets the point out um, for instance if you're getting this this info for somewhere you could actually pass it here so you could say request from uh, request to the message this is just much more readable and this is not an extreme case as I said there are far far worse cases where you have constructors with eight or nine or ten params and the biggest issue comes when you start adding stuff later 
and they get at the end of the constructor and you need to specify them. So let's say you don't want to specify this, this, and but you want to specify the next parameter, so something. You'd, ha you'd have to say from, to, cont, no, no, and then pass the parameter. It gets real messy real quickly. So this is it guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson, I know this wasn't one of the most interesting ones. But uh, if you think about this pattern, make sure uh, make sure to, to, you know, get it on your brain. I'm 100% sure that you're going to use it on your application. There's always some place to use this to make your code much more readable, to help your colleagues. So let me know what you guys thought of the video, and I see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys. See you later.